Hi friends, thank you so much for joining us for another one of our streaming safaris. I gotta say, it feels like it's been a while since we've done one of these, so thank you again for joining us. I miss you and we are not able to do this. So as you may have seen yesterday, we were talking on Fox 5 a little bit about foraging. Foraging is finding food. Now giraffes have to eat a lot. Ozzy here will eat between 40 to 60 pounds every day. That takes quite a bit. Now before we get into too much, I just want to go and say thank you guys once again for tuning in. Thank you for your donations and your continued support. We really couldn't do it without you. If you haven't had a chance to go and make a donation yet, feel free to go and do that on our Facebook page down below or directly on our website. Even just a few dollars, I'm not kidding, two dollars from those of you watching will make a huge difference in supporting our animals here. So we always do appreciate that. While we're going and doing this, if you guys do have any questions, feel free to go and ask them. We'll try and get to them during the feed. But if not, we always go through afterwards and we'll answer them as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So again, my name is Kylie. If you haven't joined us here before, I'm here with Cameron over here. And of course, this guy here is Ozzy. Ozzy is a six-year-old male reticulated giraffe. And as you can see with this tongue over here, he's doing some pretty amazing work. So again, foraging means food, means finding food, searching for it. Giraffes have to go and search for food throughout the grasslands of Africa. And they'll go and they'll find usually acacia trees. Now acacia trees have very, very large spines on them and their tongues have to go and work in between them. Hopefully you guys can hear me over the birds over there. It's a little bit loud to me. So that's what that tongue is for. Now his tongue has a very special name. It's called Prehensile. Do you guys think you guys can say that at home? Let's try that again. Prehensile. Very good. That just means it has the ability to curve around things and to curl onto it. So let's go and see that here. I'm going to ask you to use one of the mulberry branches here. So this is one of my favorite treats here. So you'll see all these leaves on here. Let's watch as his tongue strips them off. So he's going to go and hold them along there and he's doing exactly what he needs to. He's going to go and strip them right off. He loves mulberries, one of his favorite treats. See that bare branch right there? Gotta get those last couple ones. Get them up there. Oh, good job. So we're gonna go and take this and simulate it at home. So think about what it takes to go and find food. How do you guys forage? Probably by going up to the refrigerator and seeing what's in there today. We don't have to worry about finding our food too much. Can you imagine being at a large area where it might be dry and things might not be growing throughout the year? or maybe it's very cold, like in the winter, how would you find food? Well, animals like this guy here have a lot of different ways to be able to do that. Today, we're gonna simulate, pretend, what it's like to go and use a prehensile tongue to go and find food. So here's the supplies you're gonna need today. Do you need a box or an open container? I filled mine with some strips of paper. Do you guys have any recyclables at home? like newspaper or even junk mail, tear it up into strips and then you'll be able to go and simulate this. You don't need much. And then you need something small that you can hold with one finger. You can use Legos, you can use dried beans. I'm gonna use some nuts here today. I'm just gonna go and place a few of them here throughout this box. I'm gonna shake it around, mix it up here. Now, only using my finger see if we can go and find one of our nuts in here. It's actually pretty tough. I think I got one. I can only use that one finger so you have to go and twirl it around. Here we go. Pretty tough. Keep practicing that. We got a runaway carrot. Let's grab that real quick. <laughs> so keep practicing that. So those are some ways you guys can go and practice what it's like to go out and find food in a difficult way. Think about how an elephant goes and uses that tongue, or uses that trunk, like fingers, to be able to lift food up into its mouth. That's a way of foraging, finding food, finding the grass in small areas, and lifting that trunk up using those fingers. Have you ever seen that with elephants? You better have for sure, right? Yeah. So those are some interesting ways. Now is an excellent time. If any of you guys watching at home have questions, now is a great time to go and drop them below. I'm going to keep talking a little bit about finding food 
for you guys. You'll notice that when his tongue comes out, his tongue is this nice dark black color. I'm gonna purpley color it yet, and I'm gonna show you. It's very, very slimy. There you go. Gross, huh? <laughs> the things you do when you work with animals. And that's another adaptation. You guys learned that about a week ago about how they go and they work around those large acacia trees and those large thorns. So that slippery, slimy tongue can go and move around those thorns, stripping off those leaves. And then we'll show you a little bit of that again. It comes on down with that. Now the darker color is to protect it from the sunlight. And as they go and they chomp up those leaves, if they do happen to get any thorns in their mouth, <coughs> they're just able to go and swallow them down. Pretty easy. So that slippery, lava, slimy tongue there. Basically acts as lubrication and helps them from getting poked by the thick thorns. Looks like we have a question. Yes, they may not have heard it just to speak up a little bit louder, but they just asked why his tongue was purple. So they may not have heard the answer there if yes. you want to just review that one more time. Yes, it is pretty loud out here today, guys, so I apologize. I'll try and speak a little bit louder. We'll try and get a little bit closer too, because I got some loud birds, which again, parrots. We talked about that on our bird talk. Birds can be very loud. So his purpley tongue right here is actually to help protect from the sun. These animals usually are eating about 18 hours a day. I'm really jealous about that fact. I won't lie, I wanna be able to eat 18 hours a day. But to protect it from the sun, can you imagine being outside with your tongue hanging out all day long? Can you imagine getting a sunburn on your tongue? Ugh, that sounds pretty miserable if you ask me. So the darker color on the tongue helps to protect from the sunlight because these guys are eating so much throughout the day. All right, what's our next question? All right, we got two questions. We have, I can't see any teeth. Where are they? And what's his name? All right, so this here is Ozzy the giraffe. He is the only giraffe here in the state of Nevada. He's pretty well known. Now, you won't be able to see most of his teeth. I hopefully can show you a few of them down here. But we're gonna show you how he goes and strips these leaves here. You see those teeth right in through there. He has a few right down there. And he's gonna go and use them to strip some of the leaves off there. He only has about eight teeth right down, right down here in the front here. And then most of them are actually located back underneath his eye here. So they actually have the same number of teeth that we do, 32. Most of the grinding teeth are located all the way back underneath the eye. All that space in between his front uh, lower teeth and the back here is all gums. And on the top half, all the way back, even from his nose back to about here, is a very hard palate that he can use to mush up food. So he uses that very, very thick muscle tongue to be able to go and mush up his food. So you're not gonna see many teeth because they're so far back. Next question. Why are there bumps on his ossicones? I love talking about this question. Let's see if they can show off those ossicones. So this right away is how you can tell he's a boy giraffe. So giraffes are born with ossicones, but you can see his are a lot bigger. This is a male. Males have no hair up on top of these ossicones because males use them. They do something called necking where they throw their heads and necks up into each other and they're constantly going and fighting like that. So as they fight, they will actually increase the amount of calcium on their head and it solidifies. It's actually adding bone to their skull. So a male skull can be 30% larger than a female. So if you're looking at a giraffe and they have those ossicones with those little tufts of fur up top there, those have a really cute name. They're called ossipuffs. You know you're looking at a female giraffe. And this right here, by the way, this is called the mesocone, middle cone. It's still part of an ossicone and it's much larger on males. All right, any more questions? Not so far. All right. Well guys, it looks like this is going to be a pretty short streaming safari today. We do want to say thank you. Now, before we go and check out though, I have some homework for you. On Friday, we're going to be doing one of our uh, next streaming safaris on enrichment. Now enrichment is how we go and provide stimulation for the animals. You guys get enrichment every day. So think about how you're getting stimulation physically, how you're getting stimulation mentally, and how you're working those brain muscles and body muscles differently, especially now that you might be staying at home a little bit more. So think about that before we go and talk about our next one. If you can maybe think about some fun enrichment that you do for your pets at home too, that's another great one.
Oh, we got one more question before we head out. How old can giraffes get? That's a great question. In human care, we typically see male giraffes to be about lower to mid 20s. Uh, and the females usually mid 20s to maybe upper 20s, but usually they live just a few years longer. In their natural environment, late teens is pretty common for both males and females. All right, bud, I think that about wraps it up. Thank you guys so much for joining us once again. Again, any donations that you guys are able to help make during this time is extremely helpful. Again, we have absolutely no income right now, so you guys at home are really helping to support us. We couldn't do it without you. Yes. We have one more question. Absolutely. Is he dangerous to others? To others, yes. So first off, he is actually dangerous to humans purely by size. Not necessarily the fact that he is an aggressive animal. Ozzy is a prey animal. That means that he can be a little bit skittish because he knows that predators can hunt him. So if he gets scared and runs because something startles him, that's a natural behavior that we would expect them to do. And he's so big, he wouldn't notice if we were maybe in the way. So he could actually hurt us. If you take a look at these big legs behind me here, each one of those legs can kick out in any direction. So if we get too close to them, he can kick forward, he can kick to the side, and those feet, almost 12 inches, can have a pretty solid wallet. That's how they go and protect themselves from lions in their natural environment. Now, when it comes to other giraffes, yes. Not often, but they can pretty severely hurt each other when they're doing that necking. Now, for the most part, males live by themselves. They're only gonna come together when it's time for breeding. Even females don't really herd together unless they have babies because they are such a large animal, they're able to live by themselves pretty easily. But if there's a girl around, those boys are gonna come around asking for our girlfriend, and usually they do that by fighting, that necking technique. They have been shown to hurt each other pretty severely, and in some cases, even break necks. Yes. One more question for you. Have they ever been hunted by humans? Absolutely. A um, Couple of different things with that. So throughout na uh, the natural history of the tribes in the region, it was actually pretty common for them to be hunted as a rite of passage. But by then you were using spears or maybe a bow and arrow. So that was kind of a way that they were able to go through there. Throughout the years, technology has changed in the way of guns. So it's become a lot easier to be able to hunt these gentle giants. So those are things that we're noticing a lot more. There's a lot of interesting things going on with how these giraffes are being affected by humans in Africa today, which is the only place you can find them. I highly recommend going and checking out the Giraffe Conservation Fund. Follow their website. They are an organization that we help support here. A lot of the donations that we're able to get through things like our World Giraffe Day events go to supporting them. They're a boots on the ground organization, so to speak. So they actually have people in Africa designed to help them. And on their website, they talk about some of the effects that humans are having on them in different ways. Hunting and poaching is definitely one of them, but it might not be in ways that you expect. So I definitely recommend checking that out. Yes. One more. How tall is he? Right now, he's about 16 feet. You can show on the side of the door there. We have his growth chart, which is probably bigger than your guys at home, kiddos. But our growth chart, because he is kind of a kid for us, he's up there. So you'll right, see he's right around the 16 mark, which is actually on the lower side of that. There's still a lot of numbers above that. That's as tall as he can get. About 18 to 20 feet is where he expects to grow. He has a reticulated giraffe. They are one of the larger ones of the four giraffe species out there. Pretty awesome, Oz. All right, gang, I think that just about finishes us up. Again, thank you so much for those donations at home. If you would like to contribute even just a few dollars, that is what's helping us get through right now. We have no other income right now. So those donations that we're seeing have been a huge help. You can go to lionhabitatranch.org and donate directly on our page or directly through Facebook. It's pretty easy. Just go down to the link below or there's one probably right up at the top of the page. And you can just go and click even just a few dollars. I'm not kidding, guys. Two dollars on what you'd normally be spending on a gallon of gas right now because we're all staying at home really goes to help that. So obviously we know that there's a lot of people out there who have to go and uh, worry about things because um, they're not working. We understand that. But if there's anybody out there who does have a little bit to go and spend, we greatly appreciate that. Another way you can help is even if you can't support right now, just share this 
Go ahead and invite friends, invite family. Go ahead and watch this. If you know anybody with kids at home who maybe want to go and see what it's like to go and forage, I kid you not, guys, having kids at home, time yourself. Go ahead and put some Legos in here and see who can find all the red Legos first. That's a really good way to go and see what it's like to forage in very specific circumstances. I recommend it. All right. We got one last question. Will we be live tomorrow? Will we be live tomorrow? Right now, I can't promise anything. We have a pretty limited staff. So while we try to go and do these streaming safaris at least twice a week, definitely on Wednesdays and Fridays, we might have what we call bonus content right now. We will absolutely try. I don't think we're gonna be live anytime later on today, but definitely keep checking our Facebook page because I think we're gonna have some cool photos and videos because we got some birthdays in the house we're gonna be setting up and celebrating for. Uh, but then tomorrow, if we have something that we're able to show you, absolutely. But right now we just can't promise anything. Still keep checking back. If we do, we'll try and give you a heads up as well. An easy way is anytime we go live, Go ahead to the top corner of this Facebook post right now. You'll see those dots. Go ahead and click on that. Every time we go live, you'll get a notification. That way you don't have to worry about missing anything. Also make sure you're following the page and you uh, click on uh, get content or notifications. It's a really easy way to go and make sure you never miss out on the action. All right, guys, I think we're just about done. Remember, you guys got some homework for Friday. We'll be seeing you for our next streaming safari about enrichment on Friday. It's going to be 11.30 a.m. Pacific time. Again, any questions you have, we love answering those. So if you have any questions throughout the day, feel free to post them on any of our comments. We have a lot of time to be able to go through and follow those. So you'll either see myself or the Lion Habitat page itself. Go and reply. We love answering those. And we'll be sure to see you again real soon. Shout out to our news crews who did a really awesome um, video about us yesterday. So if you didn't check out Fox 5, go ahead and go to their More Fox 5 news page. You can see more about us. We did share that as well. And that's, again, more easy ways that we're able to go and reach our community. Couldn't do this without you, everyone. We love you all so much. Thank you for our support. Stay home. Stay safe. Stay healthy. We'll see you again next time, guys. Bye, guys.